Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. Well, maybe we should go ahead and just shut the channel down because it seems as if the search for alien life in the universe has come to an end. And why has it come to an end, you might ask? Well, because apparently the ingredients needed for alien life in the universe do not exist. And while that may sound like an April Fool's joke, I assure you it's far from it. In fact, it's what's being said in a new report here from Science Alert titled, quote, A vital ingredient for alien life seems to be missing from the universe. Uh, it goes on to discuss how one of the essential chemical elements that are needed for life to exist in the universe is that of phosphorus. And apparently, the latest research out in the science community suggests that there may be, quote, less of it in the wider universe than we thought, and that that could be bad news for those hoping to find alien life in space. And so I'll put the link to this article down below, and I actually posted a tweet linking to this article on uh, Twitter before I created this video, along with the fact that I wasn't buying it. And I'll tell you why here in a minute, but just kind of paraphrasing, and you guys can read the whole article, but it basically states that phosphorus is thought uh, to be an essential ingredient because it triggers a chemical reaction that is necessary to spark the development of organisms, which was carried out here on Earth via meteorites. And in this new study, researchers examined readings from the William Herschel Telescope in the Canary Islands where they basically measured the infrared light produced by phosphorus and iron in the Crab Nebula, which is this massive gas cloud that was left over from a supernova located around 6,500 light years away from Earth. And basically, long story short, is that they found way less phosphorus than they thought they would, and that these results indicate that some star systems might have very little to none of this chemical element. And so now we've got all of these articles out here that are basically using these results as a way of saying, well, looks like there's no alien life out there. And from some of the articles, you would think after reading it that it was case closed and that we might as well not even waste our time on channels like this uh, because apparently there's nothing out there. But, you know, there's this fundamental miscalculation right from the get go with this study, which is that as one of my Twitter followers put it so bluntly and beautifully, which is that exactly how do these scientists know what vital substances alien life would need to exist? Well, the answer is they couldn't possibly know that. And they're obviously only going by what we Earthlings, we humans, need here on Earth, which may be something totally and radically different from what some short, big-headed alien gray might have needed to thrive on a lower gravity planet on the other side of the galaxy, let alone in a galaxy on the other side of the universe, one of billions. And so, I mean, articles like this to me are almost pointless because they are starting off with a flawed question. And so part of me wonders, is this just lazy research uh, or is there something more shady to it? You know, are they perpetuating stories like this so that people like us will just give up? You know, and it's almost like they just want us to believe and they want like the, the research and the topic of aliens to kind of fall to the wayside with the way that the Easter Bunny would or Santa Claus would to a child. Whereby when you're young and you first hear about it, you believe that there is ample evidence that these things exist. And how could they not? And as you grow older, that evidence starts to fall apart and you realize well, that these are just made up superstitions and well, you shouldn't waste time on it. And that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from some, not all, but some of this research that's been put out lately. Who knows if it's been funded by the powers that be or not, but it almost feels like they just want us to give up and hopefully brainwash us into believing the idea of aliens, despite all of the evidence that we have and that we've shown here on the channel and others have shown well, there's no phosphorus, so it must have all just been swamp gas and weather balloons, and we can all go back to our regularly scheduled programs. So, like I said on Twitter, I'm not buying it. I don't think any of us could fathom what the chemical makeup is of an alien being 
or how they came to be in the first place, and what genetic changes have occurred over the millennia, and whether it got to a point where they even needed to be created genetically, and whether they are, you know, a, an entirely new being that is made up of some sort of crazy out of this world nanotechnology, so, you know, just some sort of crazy stuff that would totally blow our minds. And here we are with titles like this, talking about how alien life probably doesn't exist because we couldn't find phosphorus. And so, yeah, I, I think this goes to show that even in science, which by the way, these so-called truths of science seem to change every five to 10 years, what we know about it is that it can be wrong, it's very clunky, and that you shouldn't invest too heavily into it, at least papers like this. So again, tell me what you think down below. And before we go today, just real quick to add, for those of you who've been following, the last couple of videos we've been talking about strange weather, mysterious things happening around the world, and the animal life on planet Earth that seems to be acting very strange lately. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch my last three or four videos to get yourself caught up. But suffice it to say, animal life, and up until today, a lot of birds especially, have been acting really strange. And well, now, it would seem that other animals are doing it as well. And in my home state, nonetheless, where people are reporting so-called zombie raccoons freaking out the local population. So check out this news clip from WKBN 27. A strange weekend for Youngstown police. A jump in calls for raccoons acting strange, but we're told it's not because they have rabies. Tonight, First News reporter Molly Reed shares a firsthand account from a man who saw one of the raccoons and took pictures of it. Plus, we're hearing from ODNR about why the animals are acting this way. Molly has more details tonight at 11. In the past couple of weeks, Youngstown police have been called to over a dozen of these raccoon calls, and all of them have the same report of what they are calling strange zombie-like behavior, and all of them are happening in the middle of the day. Looked over there, and he got distracted, and he saw a, a raccoon coming our way. Robert Cogasol's playtime with his dogs was interrupted by a feisty and sick raccoon last week. I got the dogs back in the house. The raccoon falls us right to the front door. Once inside, Robert, a wildlife photographer, grabbed his camera to document what he called extremely strange behavior. He would stand up on his hind legs, and, which I'd never seen a raccoon do before, and he would uh, show his teeth, and then he would fall over backwards and go into almost like a comatose uh, condition. Robert attempted to scare the raccoon away, only to find the animal was not interested in leaving. He'd come out of it, walk around, and then he'd do the same thing again. Youngstown police were called to 14 similar situations in the past three weeks. Reports detailing particular behavior and large noises or motions not scaring the animals away. The majority of the calls happened in the daytime too, and raccoons are nocturnal. Those animals, including the one in Robert's yard, were ultimately euthanized. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources tells me it doesn't sound like rabies, but rather a disease called distemper. Raccoons are really uh, prone to getting several different diseases uh, that uh, even amongst themselves can be devastating uh, to the population. Jeff says diseases like this stay local and eventually die off. When you end up with a, just a couple individuals left uh, that aren't as susceptible to it, then uh, the disease kind of dies out for a while until you know the populations grow again. And Jeff says trapping is the way to keep the sick population down. He says once you do trap them, though, do not relocate them. These ones, unfortunately, have to be euthanized. In the newsroom, Molly Reed, WKBN 27 First News at 11. So what do you guys think? Could it all be chalked up to just some disease, or is there something more to it, and does this relate to uh, the other strange animal activity we've been talking about lately? Uh, like I always say, time will tell. So creepy stuff happening in the world. Thank you guys for stopping by today. Be sure to follow me on social media, all the links down below. Stop by and check out our online merch shop, which is a fantastic way for you to support the channel and look sharp doing it. So I'm going to get back to being wide awake and not sleeping. So remember to take your NyQuil and I'll see you guys back in just a bit.